it's a vlog. So I wanted to start a vlog maybe this week, maybe the next few weeks, depending on how things go. Specifically for the arcs that I need to read in March that are coming out in April and I have three to read right three Okay, three to read and so I figured It's enough that I can create a whole themed vlog. So these are the three that I have to read I'll do them in the order that I got them. So first I got second first impressions by Sally Thorne Sally Thorne is the author of the hating game, which I loved and this is about a woman that works at a nursing home and this guy is like the son of the owner of the nursing home and she basically like enlists him to like be an assistant to these like little ladies that torment him and the first time he meets her he uses her for little old ladies so it just sounds like a bunch of fun and then i have another romance novel here which this one's a regency uh novel called to love and to loathe by martha waters and this is a marriage bet terms complicated between regency era friends with benefits and an idyllic countryside house party i love regency romance and like ever since watching bridgerton i've been in the mood to read more but i've had a lot of other things going on then the last one is uh, is um victories greater than death by charlie jane anders and this is a sci-fi and i don't read a super ton of sci-fi so i'm really excited about this one and it says outsmart your enemies outrun the galaxy on the back oh and tina is a human clone of the most brilliant alien commander in the history of all time and space so that kind of you know gets the ball rolling for me i think i might start with this one because this past weekend i binged a like smutty romance series called the initiation by nikki sloan super dark about just like bridge people doing fucked up things and so i kind of like don't want to dive right into like more romance i kind of want to like change gears a little bit so i'm gonna start with this one and see how i like it i've been getting a lot of book mail lately and like don't judge me i just have been getting a lot of book mail lately <laughs> to start off i need to talk about this thing that i received in the mail what is this? a chain of iron arc um i got this from a friend i'm not gonna mention who in case they don't want to like be named but a friend of mine received an arc and was like, you know what, you love this series a lot, so I'm going to gift it to you. And I was like, do you want my firstborn child? You have my love forever. Like, I feel like I'm not appropriately expressing like how happy it made me because I'm like dead, tired, exhausted right now. But like, I could, I could literally cry that I have this. And I have a chain of gold arc that I got at, a at ALA Midwinter last year. So this just means like when the last one comes out, I'm gonna have to find an arc somehow because I can't not have the last book in an arc. Side note, I also want to read The Promised Neverland volume three this week and then maybe also volume four next week and then I watch the anime because it covers the first four volumes of the manga. I finally picked up my copy of Lost Book of the White and so I think in April, I think in April my plan is going to be to read this, reread Chain of Gold and then read Chain of Iron. So you might have a Shadowhunters vlog coming your way in the future because I just kind of love when a new book comes out. I don't know, I like, I just really want to reread Chain of Gold because I just loved it so much and I feel like I don't reread books enough. So anyways, okay. And then I, I'm going on this big rom-com kick and I just like know over the summer this is what I'm mainly going to be reading. So I'm just like, you know, stocking up in advance. So the first book that I got is 99% mine, but they sent me the UK cover randomly and I like the US cover better and I want it to like match. So I'm going to return this one and try and get the right one. Then I really love Fix Her Up by Tessa Bailey. So I got Love Her or Lose Her, which is the second in the series. And this follows, um, this is like a second chance romance for high school sweethearts that got married and now they're having relationship troubles. And then I got the third one in the series, Tools of Engagement. And this is apparently Enemies to Lovers. So then these all follow like similar characters of featuring like around a construction company that the first book characters Georgie like her family owns and I love Fixture Up when I first read it one of the first rom-coms that I ever read and then I finally 
I purchased The Kiss Quotient by Helen Wong because I've just heard that this book is really great and it's written by an author with Asperger's and it's about a character with Asperger's and so I just really want to want to read a romance that comes from that perspective because that's not a perspective that we get in the romance genre very often and I've just heard it just also like a lot of fun and really great and it has math on the cover and I love math I know not like <laughs> I love math and so yeah here it is and then I was like well I'm buying the first one so I bought the second one which is the bride test and this is actually about a mail order bride so I don't know too much about that but I'm very curious very curious so hopefully these yeah I just feel like I see a lot of rom-com binging in my future for when the weather gets super nice and I have a balcony now so I could just imagine myself like coming home from work we have my glass of wine, sitting on my balcony in my comfortable chair, staring at the ocean, reading a book, a, a little spicy rom-com. I just feel like that's that's my ideal life that I've envisioned for myself, and I feel like when the weather gets nice, I can obtain that life. It's March, and I've read 22 books already this year, which like, I this is like way surpassing like any <laughs> pace that I've had in the past, and I think it's just because reading romances you can just read them really quickly and i've been reading more manga and stuff like that so sometimes just like burying the things that you read can increase the number of books but sometimes it sucks that you go by number of books because like a book like this is like different than reading like a monk but anyways that's why i also like to track number of pages read. anyways that's it for this clip and just be on the lookout for me and when i give you updates on how my arc reading is going for these three books that i have to tackle I honestly wanted to turn on my camera for like no reason other than the fact that I look nice today and I'm outside and it's beautiful out and I just love gorgeous weather. So um, I don't really have any real reading <laughs> updates. Oh, the cover for Margaret Rogerson's Vespertines just dropped and like I'm so excited about it. If you know me, you know Sorcery of Thorns is one of my all-time favorite books and this is her first ever duology about a nun that like accidentally awakens an ancient spirit attached to a relic. A priestess can become a Vespertine which she needs to like vanquish this army of the dead that's marching on their convent but she doesn't know how so she has to ask this like spirit that's attached to the relic to teach her how but like the spirit could have ulterior motives so that just sounds like everything I could ever want. goodness the weather is literally so gorgeous i'm wearing shorts today like when my legs can be free that's when i like feel like i come alive so i this is supposed to be an arc vlog um i finally have an update for actually reading an arc and that is victory he's greater than death and this is a space opera i think it's the beginning of a trilogy and if you look like the cover is just really pretty I am like flying through this. I sat down to start it last night and I actually got 50% of the way through. So the way that this works is that Tina is a clone of like a decorated space captain and she was sent to earth and like her DNA was modified so that she would look like an earthling and she like was sent, her clone was sent to like grow up on earth and she has this like homing beacon in her chest that will like light up when she's ready um but it will like attract also like her enemies too so things go from there and i will say like i think the beginning part on earth is like pretty succinct it gets pretty like there's not a lot of like exposition in the beginning like i think it just really gets like right into the plot and once we get up into the spaceship that's when things start to get really cool what i love about 
sci-fi is that it, yeah like you're set in this background of space but the possibilities are literally like limitless because like you are not held to like the laws of the earth right like you can make a creature be like whatever thing it is and like have evolved for whatever reason you want oh my god i couldn't find my dog and he was literally right near my chair hi baby reading about like the aliens is really cool and especially like just how the author creates like different cultures and like it talks about like the different like customs between all of the things and like what i find really cool like in this royal fleet is that all of the aliens introduce themselves with their pronouns so i just thought that that was really cool because obviously pronouns are like a a thing that people are trying to incorporate like just putting your pronouns in your bio stuff like that so i thought i thought that was just like really cool because like right like you don't have to go with the laws of like human customs here like these more civilized civilizations that are supposed to be like evolved beyond that so like it's kind of cool that you can that like they're just introduced with their pronouns so i just thought that was like a really nice touch and i enjoyed that and then i honestly think like i'm like right halfway through i could definitely finish this tonight and then i don't know what i want my next read to be i think i'm probably gonna go for the regency romance just because like i've been in the mood for regency and then i'll go for this one last because i feel like this is like my most anticipated one so I'll save this in just for last i'm going to vlog and i don't know i've just been in, like such a reading mood lately like, i am like rushing not rushing but i'm like flying through books like i read half of this book in one night which is just very exciting to me it's so nice out yay I love it. So it's Sunday. I'm about to film a video for my Feb wrap up because I've been needing to be better about filming wrap ups. So I'm just gonna do it today. And then I am gonna like just chill doing bookish things. Like this morning I was watching booktube, I played Animal Crossing, very relaxing. Last night I finished Victories Greater Than Death and I thought I was gonna read more after I finished this, but then it was like 9 p.m. and I passed out. I don't know how that happened, but I literally just like fell straight asleep. So I really like this. I'm gonna give it a four star, I think. I think it's just like such a solid sci-fi. It really deals a lot in the found family trope and just so much about like friendship. And there's a really cute WLW romance in here. So I just like really appreciated that. And I just had a lot of really cool and inventive elements as well. So very solid sci-fi, made me want to read more sci-fi. Then my plans are, so after this, you'll probably see like a clip of me putting away books because I just have a bunch of books out on my table that need to be put away. So I'm going to finally like square those away today and I'm going to be mailing some books to some people. So I got to like sort that out. And then I want to start my next arc for this vlog, which is To Love and To Loathe by Martha Waters, which is a marriage bet turns complicated between Regency era friends. And I found the best asmr room i just started a playlist for asmr rooms because i realized i like need to keep track of the ones that i like and enjoyed listening to so i'll link that down below i think there's only like two on there right now but i'll add more i found the perfect asmr room for this like kind of regency era vibe i love regency era romances so i'm so excited for this i feel like i could really fly through it we'll see how it goes in april i'm gonna kind of like pivot and like i've been reading like a lot of different kind of books i just kind of want to go back to like that standard ya fantasy so i think april is what i'm going to be reading i already know i'm going to be rereading re sorcery of thorns with yasmin over at yasmin of the reader because we just decided we wanted to do a reread of sorcery of thorns because it's one of our favorite books 
And then I want to be reading Shadowhunters. So I think I'm going to be reading Lost Book of the White, reread Chain of Gold, reread Chain of Iron, and then I'm going to pivot and like reread From Blood and Ash, Kingdom of Flesh and Fire, and then the book when it comes out, which I think that's like more than enough like f to fill a month. But I could also read... Um, Oh, there's just so much coming out and then I'm like I wonder if I reread Shadow and Bone because the TV series is coming out <sighs> I'm just torn because I'm torn between like wanting to read new stuff and wanting to reread reads so I also Bone Crier's Dawn is coming out so I think like I'll reread Bone Crier's Moon on audio because I've really been enjoying rereading audiobooks but I do need to finish my audiobook for Concrete Rose which I just have not been reading because I've been going into work so I haven't been home to walk during lunch which is when I mainly listen to audiobooks so I'm going grocery shopping later today I think I'll listen to my audiobook then it's a pretty quick audiobook too like in one walk I got like 20% of the way through so I think I'll listen to that later today I'm reading this book it's really good I'm on page 141 so much witty banter and all of the Regency stuff that I love but the real reason I turn on the camera now is because I need to put away some books so I've just been like pulling stuff out and putting it on my counter for like a while and then I've been busy so I haven't had time to put it away so it's time to fix that because I cannot live like this anymore the life of a booktuber I did get some book mail that I wanted to talk about because um yeah so I collect books, if you didn't know. Um, and I got this special edition paperback of Crescent City. And so this beautiful paperback UK edition with the sprayed edges. Then I got my chain of oh, iron. Yeah. Waterstones exclusive. Oh my goodness. Signed. Beautiful. Oh, I'm so excited. I love collecting these. Even though Lady Midnight will forever of I am literally not paying attention to the angle right now. <laughs> and then I got this, it's an indie book, Trial of Sorcerers, Why Adventure by Elise Kofa, and Under the Dust Jacket, I just, yeah, that's why I bought it. <laughs> it's literally, it's so cool. Love and to Loathe last night and I gave it four stars. It was just such a cute historical romance. It was kind of like a friend with benefits arrangement because Diana is a widow so she has more freedom in society and her friend that she like has always had witty banter with. They like make a bet about him getting married and then they enter into a dalliance for like benefiting them both essentially um and then things start from there so i just thought it was so cute the witty banter was so funny it made me realize that i need to finish bridgerton because i still have three episodes left so i think i'm gonna do that tonight actually because like it's such a good show and then i just kind of got distracted by life the other thing i want to do tonight is read second first impressions i read like 20 pages on my lunch break today and i'm like already obsessed it's about ruthie who works at her retirement villa and just like the way that it's already written is just like so funny and relatable like ruthie is basically like she makes a lot of bullet point lists which i love and then she is just like so like i feel like i well i've only read the hating game by sally thorne i haven't read her other one but like this character is kind of similar to lucy and the fact that they're inexperienced i guess but it just makes for a cute time so basically like her co-worker is just trying to get her on like a dating app because she's like do you date people she's like no so that's where we're at and the top of the page has a little turtle on it which i just think is so adorable i just have a feeling this is just going to be like a book that i love and there's like these two little old ladies that are literally like the terrors of the town i love sally thorne and her books and like this one i'm just like so excited to read it like i just already can tell that i'm literally gonna sit down to read this and devour it so my plan is to read that and that will be the last book that i read in this arc reading vlog and then i'm gonna move on to some fantasy romance books 
Also random, but I really want to play Animal Crossing and like be inspired to design my town because it, I've been playing this game for a year and I still feel like my town is not cute, so. Okay, bye. Oh my gosh, okay, I need to come on here and literally scream about this book. Oh my god, like I was tearing up at some points. Like the ending made me cry a little bit. It was just so heartwarming and cute and I'm like in my feels. <laughs> oh. Oh. Like this is definitely like oh my God, it's such a like a good rom com. And Sally Thorne, like, The Hating Game is one of my favorite rom-coms, and this one might be more, like, I might like it more. It might be my new favorite. I will say the spice level is, like, pretty low, but the relationships, the romance, just, like, the whole oh, story. <laughs> oh my god, I'm like sobbing. <laughs> Oh my god, it was so good. And like, I just feel sentimental about it. Like, ugh. Obviously, it's getting five stars if I feel this many emotions talking about it, but like, it was just so cute. And like, I would describe this as like a lawful good ex chaotic evil well not really evil like a lawful good ex chaotic neutral pairing is how i would say because teddy the love interest is like very chaotic and like ruthie is like very like uptight law-abiding citizen tidy and neat and like oh my god just everything about it like the banter and just like the way their relationship developed and the feeling and the side characters like the Parlonies, I love them and Melanie the Sasky method like oh <laughs> it's just so good oh uh, honestly it could have been even longer at the end like I think some of the ending scenes could have been longer but it was still like, just perfect like I just feel so heartwarmed and like sad but like oh, my heart is bursting at the seams and I read this so quick and like Oh, it was just, it was just so good. So, in my ARC reading vlog, I read this one, To Love is a Love and Victory is Greater Than Death, and Second First Impressions was definitely my favorite. It's definitely a new favorite romance of mine. It, like, I guess because, like, ARCs are, like, pretty, like, low-quality materials, which is, that's fine, they're promotional materials. You're not paying for them. Um, like, it's already like that at the edges so i'm gonna go pre-order my finished copy and i'm gonna send this to a friend i don't know who yet like it's about old people so maybe gonna send it to my grandma it's like not too spicy that i like wouldn't want to send it to her like i think it's fine to send it to her but, like will she be offended about me <laughs> sending her a book that takes place in her a retirement villa maybe Maybe she would be, maybe she doesn't. <laughs> but like, I don't know, it's so cute and like, I just love it. Uh, I've heard, like, so I adored the hating game. And at first I was like, mm, Ruthie seems similar to Lucy in the hating game. But no, I actually don't think that they're that similar besides the fact that like, they both have some sort of like anxieties that they need to overcome. But the way in which they manifest them is quite different. And the love interests, like the guys, totally different. Uh, I just like, reading rom-coms just gives me like so much serotonin. Like they're just so sweet and happy. And I also love reading like fantasy books that cause me pain. But like just this, oh, like my heart is just... Anyways, um, here's some Gavin content because I feel like maybe Gavin wasn't in this vlog enough. Gavin, say hi. He wants to go to bed. 
We're gonna go sleepy, Sam, okay? We can snuggle. I have a reading lamp. There's the lamp. Um, but it actually works quite well to illuminate myself at night for the vlog, so I guess that's a good thing about my new lamp. I could see this being on my list of like my best books of the year. Like it's seriously a new fave. Even though like the things like weren't super sad, they were just like super touching and like it's fine. It's fine. No, really, I'm fine. I'm fine. Oops. Let me say hi. Gavin, say hi to the vlog. This is my handsome boy. Okay. Okay. I know. You want to go sleepies? Okay. He's like, why are you awake? Why aren't we in, in bed asleep? It's a valid question, Gavin, and the answer is that I was reading. So, okay, I'm going to close out the vlog here. I really enjoyed kind of doing a themed vlog, and I think I'm just going to continue filming tomorrow when I start reading some fantasy romance books because I have my ongoing fantasy romance series and I need to read more. So that's what's on deck. But yeah, this book is literally my new everything. I feel like it could be a new comfort book to me. Okay. And Gavin clearly wants to go outside, so we're going to go now. But have some fun, read some books, and I'll catch you guys in the next one.